I'm happy to talk with you guys today about theory of change uh, based on some conversations with Olivia and Kristen uh, last week. We decided that this would be a good topic for the community of, of practice. And uh, what I'm going to cover is really defining what a theory of change is, some three different options for capturing and conveying a theory of change, both the narrative or text-based approach, table or matrices, um, diagram approaches, including results chain. And I'll illustrate each of these approaches with examples and provide some best practices to support communicating theories of change. And uh, results chains will be featured pretty prominently. They're, they're a recommended approach in our conservation by design guidance. Actually, the term results change shows up 127 times in the guidance document, so I will be uh, covering that, I'll show you an example of a TNC Colorado River results chain that Patrick McCarthy on our call has has been uh, working with others to develop, and um, I'll show that to you in Marathi. Talk about some of the advantages of Marathi over diagramming in PowerPoint or, or Visio. And I will post this presentation, which will include some links to a shared box folder that we've set up for these community of practice uh, calls. Um, I also will be featuring some of the shared conservation agenda uh, priority strategies. And so you'll see some consistent labeling when I, uh, ever I'm showing one of those theories of, of change. Um, and I think many of you have seen some of the guidance material in the conservation by design uh, guidance material. So in general terms, a theory of change is a description of how our resources, strategies, and activities at any scale are expected to produce the results we're aspiring to achieve. There's always an underlying logic in the mind of the implementer. They're taking action to achieve uh, some result. Uh, but often the logic is not captured or defined in an explicit way. We define brilliant strategies, we go out and raise a lot of money, that we assume will lead us to some important results for nature and people. Um, but the logic isn't always clear. Sometimes there, uh, there appears to be major leaps of faith in the theory of change, the logic that requires that some kind of a miracle occurs to get from one result uh, to another. So there are these three common ways of describing a theory of change, the narrative or table, log frame approach or diagram approaches. The narrative is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is an example from a project in Africa. This one lays out explicit if-then relationships in those bullets that you see on the, on the bottom half. If we achieve this result, then we're gonna see this result. I'll show another narrative example on a comparison of three different approaches that the Colorado River whole system um, used in their, in their planning in, in just a few minutes. In terms of table or matrix approaches, I suspect most of you are familiar with the highly effective teams uh, tools in this particular diagram um, that includes these different spheres of control, influence, and impact. I'm including it in the table category because the theory of change part is really primarily a three-column table with bulleted statements. They're grouped under the three different spheres. The leftmost column is either a listing of actions or deliverables or outputs that we directly control. These then lead to intermediate results that we're trying to influence but don't have as much direct control over. And these ultimately get us to a set of outcomes that we hope our actions help achieve, but oftentimes, oftentimes depend upon the work that other people are doing as well. This specific example, uh, which is one of our priority strategies, and you can kind of see that the yellow um, tag that I'll feature on any of the examples that are coming from one of TNC's uh, priority strategies. This one, the result statements are smart. They're written in clear and measurable ways. It's also nice that you can kind of read across the left and middle columns and see the alignment because they've, they've made that the case. It's not always the, the case for these HET diagrams. Uh, and the connections to the outcomes isn't quite uh, as clear um, in this case. So these theories of change are accessible for the priority strategies are accessible to all of you via the shared uh, conservation hub. Um, so let me actually show you that. Um, if you go to unlocking.tnc.org and go to the, the search uh, panel, you can either, if you go, know the, the name of any of them, or you can use the filters that are over on the right-hand side, 
that will give you some basic information about each of the priority strategies in this case. That's what I've, I've searched on. If you click on the view details, you'll see some of the details of that project. And if you scroll down under the strategy files, you're going to see a link to the theory of change. And if I clicked on that link, it would take us to that same diagram. So I just wanted to make sure you guys were all aware of how to see and find that all of them, all of the priority strategies have that, that capability in the Shared Conservation Hub. So uh, uh, you can check those out there. So let me go back to the um, PowerPoint. All right, this is um, another example where the left-hand column in this case is listing deliverables as kind of specific sub-projects. And the, this example includes result statements that aren't as measurable as the first example that you looked at. So I think these could be made smarter. You can make connections between the deliverables and the intermediate results because they've used some bold headings. That makes it nice to be able to see the causal connections there. Uh, and in comparison to the previous example, there are many more bullets in this one. These kinds of diagrams are highly variable in terms of the level of content that, that you'll see when you're browsing across them. So here's another table format called a logical framework or a log frame, and they typically show actions on the bottom and then near-term results, often called uh, outputs. Um, and then as you move up, as the outputs are achieved, they'll lead uh, to outcomes and ultimately to achievement of the project goals. The way that you read these things is the um, you typically will look at if these activities take place, and, and these assumptions that you see listed on the right uh, are met, then you'll get these kind of results that uh, are depicted in the other rows. And if you continue with that, then it will deliver the next results and ultimately get you to the results here. You can see these are written in, in measurable ways. A log frame has been widely used in evaluation processes, especially with European foundations, more popular uh, in Europe than it is in the, in the US. Here's an example of a log frame table from some of TNC's uh, red work. I'm not going to describe the content in detail. You can see the statements of desired results, uh, including some that are labeled results for TNC that we're more in control of, and then the, as we get higher, up in the log frame, we're describing some of the overall results uh, for this, this body of work. Okay, shifting to diagram approaches. These can uh, include simple graphics, um, and you'll see, I'll show a couple examples of those. Um, many teams do use logic models or results chains, and if they, um, they those more explicitly convey how we think a project strategy or activity is going to contribute to achieving desired results. And they really define uh, testable assumptions that serve as a basis for measurement. So here's an example of a simple diagram approach from a priority strategy in Africa. It really captures the theory of change at a, at a very, uh, very high level. I think they also have some additional um, products, but this is the one that's up on the Shared Conservation Hub right now. Just using a widely understood uh, conservation success story to kind of illustrate results change. We have this ban on DDT being effectively implemented, no longer being, DDT no longer being used in ag, um, decreased bioaccumulation, the bald eagle eggshell thickness increasing, leading to increased productivity in the bald eagle populations rebounded and that ultimately led to the delisting uh, of that. So that's kind of just a, a simple description. Here's some characteristics of good results chains, and we'll look at some other examples. The boxes contain desired results and not activities. They're connected in a causal manner, a clear kind of if-then connections between each pair of boxes. They demonstrate change, so each box should describe how you hope the relevant factor will change, either increase or decrease. And they should be relatively complete. There are sufficient boxes to construct logical connections, but not so many that the chain becomes overly complex. And there should really only be one result per box. Those are some good um, 
practices for working with results chains. It's important to distinguish between two different types of diagrams that are commonly used in conservation planning, situation analysis or conceptual models uh, show the situation as it exists today. They really serve as the basis of identifying strategies versus results chains that describe our intended future results. And they start with the selected strategies and they show the logic to achieve the desired results. Both the situation analyses and results chains are, are strongly recommended tools in the CBD 2.0 uh, toolbox. So if we take a look at an ex a simple example here, here's a conceptual model for a water quality issue affecting aquatic conservation in a broad geographic area. We have an uh, issue with fertilizer runoff has been identified as a key threat and homeowners using fertilizers are the main source. And it's driven by, if you kind of probe, and this is what you do in a situation analysis, these underlying drivers kind of driven by the desire for the perfect lawn and a lack of awareness of alternatives. And these really set up the stage for picking uh, strategies, in this case, an outreach strategy to the, the homeowners. You can take that same information then and convert it into a results chain diagram where we have the targeted viability or improved viability, a kind of threat abatement occurring on the right, and then you can make those connections between the strategy, some of the near-term intermediate results that uh, project team is trying to achieve, uh, leading to uh, other intermediate results, in this case, a behavioral change. Uh, that will take you to that threat abatement. Uh, normally, I do this as an interactive poll, but I didn't connect with Olivia soon enough to do that in, uh, in Zoom. But if you look at this chain, um, which just think for a moment, which link uh, that you see lettered here has the biggest leap of faith? And if you want to put it into the chat panel, you can. We'll just take uh, like 15 or seconds or so to kind of look at this. Um, and some people are, are typing in. Um, this is one of the things when you're peer reviewing, you'd be kind of looking, looking for that. Um, and let me pull up the chat. Yep, so the, I think you guys are seeing that uh, there is quite a big leap of faith between the homeowners receiving the message and the behavior change. So they're really, uh, in this case, there's been another factor added there that's really a the homeowner's values that are actually changing. They're receiving and then uh, acting on or their um, their values are, are changing um, and uh, it adds a little bit more complete there. Oftentimes building a results chain does will trigger additional uh, strategies that might not have been identified as part of the situation analysis diagram here. In this case, the homeowners association outreach is, has been identified as another strategy. So one of the real benefits of laying out your theory of change and a results change is you create your uh, a frame to add um, measurement uh, information, both clarity around the desired results that you're trying to achieve outcomes or goals or objectives, as well as indicators. And I'll kind of illustrate uh, some of that here. So you can see some of these intermediate results have a stated um, objective, time bound measurable objective and a corresponding indicator associated with it. And that just gives you the basis to be evaluating whether the kind of progress that you assumed was going to be needed to fulfill your theory of change um, is, being, is being met. And um, not all of the factors in a results chain typically have both quantitative measurement statements and indicators, but uh, in this case, quite a few of them do. Uh, many of the indicators that you see in the specific example can be uh, acquired in the same methodology, a survey of, of homeowners. But you can see here uh, the objective and indicator for threat abatement and target um, viability. So what is not a results chain? It's like I mentioned earlier, it's not an implementation flow diagram. This is kind of, if you read the boxes here, it's really a set of activities. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna do this. This is not a direct causal uh, chain. Uh, so it's oftentimes a good idea to kind of read your factors from left to right as a series of if-then relationships. Make sure that you have your results chain 
set up in the right way and not as an implementation change. This is a pretty common mistake. Um, in fact, here's another a poll, if you looked at these three uh, examples, uh, which of these does not look like a results chain? It's more of a um, activity uh, chain. Give you a minute to just look at them. A couple of them have good result statements. And uh, this one I think is, is pretty obvious, the first one. So you want to kind of avoid that, or you do want to avoid that when you're kind of working through using the results chain uh, methodology. This is an example that's kind of more similar in theme to many of the global and regional priority strategies TNC is implementing. This is uh, laying out a results chain uh, that lays out a theory of change for a sustainable palm uh, oil industry that halts the conversion of high conservation value forests. And so you can see a logical sequence of setting, establishing and setting some specific standards then making companies aware of them and setting policies that lead to the implementation of those standards. The standards actually being met and then other companies on the supply chain being pressured to join. This then ultimately leading to the halt of high conservation value forest conversion to palm oil. In this case, the results chain links to some other nature targets as well as human well-being targets and you can see that uh, the causal connections that tie all that uh, together. Uh, as before, some of these intermediate results can have and should have specific time-bound measurable statements associated with them that serves as a fundamental tracking and adaptive management uh, capability. And uh, those, you should have them also for the, the nature and human well-being targets. So here, across all the different sort of narrative and table and diagram approaches, here's a checklist of some things to look for in a robust theory of change. Do you see really good, compelling, clear, tangible result statements? Are they credible, believable, and feasible? Is the if-then logic clear? Are there any major leaps of faith? If the theory of change is presented, uh, is it presented at the right level of detail? And I, I do want to mention here that it's often the best practice to have a couple of versions, especially of a results chain, one that you convey to uh, audiences that may not be as versed in this or that, you know, maybe your, your donors, you might have a more detailed one that the project team is actually using that is your basis for adaptive management, but it's a kind of a good, it is a best practice to have a couple of different versions of that. Um, and then, you know, is it really clear how that theory of change is going to be evaluated with measurable outcomes and indicators? So the next three slides are all from the Colorado River Whole System Project and show three different theory of change uh, products. I'm going to, um, I'm just going to introduce these really briefly, show the results chain example in Marathi, and then I'll ask uh, Patrick McCarthy to speak uh, briefly after I've gone over this, um, these three different uh, styles in the Marathi diagram to speak to why the team did it three different ways, how they complement one another. Um, so this is, I'm not going to read through the narrative, but they have a really nice, as part of their business plan, they have a nice uh, description where somebody can, can really get a good sense of this by reading it. There was one more page that's not depicted on here, but it's in the, in the business plan. They developed a single overall graphic for the theory of change that kind of borrows from those spheres of control, influence, and impact. That is, I think, a great way of conveying the major kind of um, course of action, different uh, strategy portfolios that, that, that they've come up with for this five state whole system project. So they have this as kind of a, an, an uber or overarching nice diagram. And then they have uh, results chains that have set, been set up separately for each of the different um, strategy uh, portfolios. So I'm going to switch over now and actually show you that, uh, that results chain uh, in, in the Marathi adaptive management software. So uh, oftentimes these diagrams are done in PowerPoint um, or Visio or other graphing programs, but there's some real advantages to being, to taking advantage of a tool that the Nature Conservancy helped to develop, this 
of Marathi Adaptive Management Software. And there's uh, both the desktop tool, which is what we're looking at right now, and a web platform called Marathi Share that offers many advantages uh, over PowerPoint that I'll touch on briefly here. So this is one of the results chains that Patrick and his team developed um, in Marathi Desktop. So in addition to kind of laying out the logic from left to right, they also have these measurable uh, outcome statements or objectives in the Marathi uh, terminology where they, you can see, and in Marathi, if you position the cursor over these uh, individual symbols, you'll see the different uh, objective and, and indicators, the corresponding measurement indicators that you would use. And if I double click on, uh, in this case, I'll go over to the environmental flow example, but I'll actually open up a dialog box and uh, it's going to open up on um, a different screen here. So let me uh, drag that up to the one I'm sharing right now. Um, but in addition to having the measurable statements on there, this is where the team can enter specific indicator values for that. And for any one of these uh, measurements uh, over time, you can type that in and specify additional data uh, about that just on this dialog box. If I scroll down, you'll see all of the measurement data and at the bottom, you'll see what the uh, desired future value is. In this case, we're looking at million acre feet of water and we're trying to get it to, um, trying to, get it to 15 uh, million acres feet, feet of water. So that's just an one of the benefits of, of having this uh, set up is the quantitative indicators and outcome statements can be spelled out. So in addition to the quantitative indicator measurements, Marathi also supports the qual uh, qualitative rating of the progress being achieved. And that's what you see in the bottom right corner of, of each of these uh, boxes. So if I put the cursor over here, you'll see some uh, qualitative ratings. Um, you know, th these would include things like partially achieved, and you can see the description here that makes it easy for anyone reviewing this theory of change diagram to see what kind of progress is being made. Here's one up here where the result uh, has been achieved already and co so completed, and you can read that in a, um, and understand kind of the, the theory of or how the theory of change is progressing with a combination of these quantitative and qualitative uh, techniques. So this is the Marathi Share or the Marathi Desktop platform. I'm going to switch back or switch over to the um, Marathi Share uh, online. This is just uh, looking at the Colorado River system, a whole system. By the way, this is what you're seeing will probably not look familiar to you. This is a brand new a complete overhaul of the Marathi Share website that will be launched next month in September. Uh, but I'm going to use it for the for the demo, and we're looking at the landing page of the whole system project, and you can kind of get basic information about it, see some high-level um, metrics over there, a map. But I'm going to jump straight to what we were looking at there in terms of the theory of the theory of change. So you'll see the same kind of uh, diagram that we saw in Marathi Desktop, and you can zoom in and pan around uh, to read that. But I'm going to go to the goals and objectives monitoring. So this is where you have the basis of looking at quantitative indicator measurements. There's the desired future status uh, over on the right, and those are the other measurement values we saw in Marathi Desktop. If I scroll down, you'll see each of these measurement values, it's easy to edit uh, any of those entries. Or let's just say I had a new value. The project team had come up with uh, data from this year. I can come in and click on the plus, and we'll just use today's date. And let's say we got this down to 14. I can click on that, and you'll see that that new value is instantly displayed on this dashboard or this graphic up here. So historically, a lot of the editing and addition of information had to be done in Marathi Desktop, and Marathi Desktop and Marathi Share talk to one another, so you can send the data back and forth. But the shift has been to move to more of any of the transactional information, like progress ratings or indicator measurements, to move that to 
uh, the online environment. So when people have a good internet connection and they don't have to use the offline or Marathi desktop, they can make those changes online. And any member of the project team can be in here at the same time. So it supports this kind of simultaneous access as well. So this is the indicator measurement. If we go to the results, the qualitative result status, you can see kind of a color-coded listing of all of the intermediate results that were on that results chain. This is one of them that we looked at in, in the desktop um, environment. But again, it's really easy when Patrick has a, and his team have a new update, they can come in here and add a, a new result statement. But this just makes it easily accessible online for anybody who's tracking the progress of the Colorado River whole system project. They can just come in here and browse around some of the, um, these uh, progress ratings to see how, how the work is, is progressing. Um, so let me, I'm gonna go back, open up the PowerPoint slide, and Patrick, maybe you could take a, a few moments just because uh, this is a fairly new um, a summary product that, that you, or the business plan and the measures framework that, that you've developed with with help from other people. And I can kind of scroll through any of these diagrams or the narrative, but maybe can you share a little bit about um, some parallel efforts or how you ended up with both a narrative, a high level diagram and results chains? Uh, yeah, for sure, Dan. And first of all, you know, I, I want to thank Dale Turner, who's on the, on the phone today and you yourself, Dan, for your support as well as Rob Sutter for um, helping put all this together. It's a work in progress, and we're really trying to strike a balance here between um, yes, sort of rigor and precision and, um, and, and, and user friendliness and accessibility. Uh, so that's one of the reasons actually going to your question, we have, um, or addressing your question, we have uh, used, I, I guess, a number of different modes or formats for, um, working through a theory of change and developing measures based on that theory of change uh, with the large group uh, that supports the Colorado River program. You know, we've got about um, 60 people all told who are supporting this work, who are involved in the business plan. And we found that it was um, useful over the months that we were developing the business plan to actually use a couple of different modes and parallel processes to come up with um, theories of change. We had one group working on the, that, that produced the graphic that Dan is showing right now, as well as um, the first narrative that he showed. And then we had another group that was really working mostly on a narrative. And we completed the business plan based on the sort of merging of these two, two groups, agreement on the terms, on um, on the outcomes, on um, the logic uh, behind um, what, what amounts to a narrative results chain. And then we found that, just one more point about this, we found that later when we were trying to develop, <clears throat> excuse me, smart objectives and outcomes, long-term outcomes and indicators uh, for the purpose of measuring our progress, that's when we realized, gosh, we really need to get into the details of these results chains uh, and use Marathi to get into the kind of level of specificity. And uh, well, what I'm trying to say is that using, using Marathi kind of forced a number of issues uh, for us. And it was, it was challenging. Uh, it took some time to get through, but I, ultimately I think it was, it was useful for us to, to circle back and use this tool um, you know, with, with the support of a facilitator to come up with, um, to come up with goals, objectives, um, and so on that are really, um, really measurable and that will help us uh, develop um, and uh, get better at evidence-based conservation and, and, and really do adaptive management for this big whole system project. All right, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, and the business plan and the measures reports that Patrick um, has worked on. They're available also as um, linked uh, links in the Shared Conservation Hub. So you can go to the Colorado River Whole System Project in our in our Hub Project and, and click out to see that. Thank you very much, Patrick. And there may be some questions for you when we get into the Q and A section a, a little bit later. Um, I I did 
I am going to show you in just a moment a summary of kind of different types of theory of change, theories of change that are, and when I looked at all 48 of the priority strategies, so we'll switch to that in just a second, but one of the slides that will um, that I'll include in when I post this or put it up to box, there's just some additional kind of information link. This will take you straight to the to the um, guidance material in the CBD 2.0 uh, uh, website. Um, there's uh, Rosetta Stone that shows different terminology because there's quite a bit of different ways that these are described, and you'll see different conservation organizations and foundations in there, and you can use the hover text, it's an Excel workbook, but it'll uh, kind of show you how some of these different terminologies and definitions uh, exist out there. There's a really good set of USAID guidance documents, including um, a results chain one, and I think I have that open right now, but I think, you know, there's a link there for these how-to guides. I really encourage you to to check them, these out, they're fairly new and they're in a couple different languages, but there's one on situation models, there's another one on using results chains to pick theories of change and defining outcomes and indicators. And I just am really impressed with the level of, of effort and quality of the products that have emerged there. So those links are in there. There's a peer reviewed publication uh, that Foundations for Success put together on results chains and then there's a whole organization that has a website theoryofchange.org with a lot of additional resources too. 